welcome to I and I Studio. Um, we're going to show you how to make these linoleum prints. It's not really linoleum, I guess they're rubber block prints to use on the jelly plates. So um, we demonstrated the jelly plates and how we use the jelly plates last week. It's just one of many, many ways that you can use jelly plates. It is by no means the only way. Um, I wanted to read a couple of comments that we got on the video, and I really appreciate your comments. It makes me feel like I'm having a connection with the audience, and it's pretty important because otherwise you're just talking into a, a camera, um, and it's not real. So Sarah writes, the demo was plenty of fun. You use the plate in ways I have not. So relate to the different aspects of different papers used and love the why not spirit. Um, so yeah, for this part of a painting, there is kind of a why not spirit. I think later on we hone in on particulars and it can become very intentional, but not at this part. Um, and then uh, Gail wrote, she'd like to learn to make the stamps. So love your teaching, awesome. Thank you, uh, Sarah and Gail. So Chuck is the expert in making these and I'm gonna let him show you how he does it. You ready? Sure. Okay. I've had to make a small table adjustment just now. Anyway, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make some stamps, and I want to show uh, what the finished product is. Uh, these are just certain things that I gather from different packaging, and I'll talk a little bit about the packaging in a bit, and then I will uh, carve into them uh, and then kind of expand on them to get certain effects. And these are stamps I've made in the past. Um, and they really do some wonderful things and you can use them over and over and over again. They're relatively cheap. But what I like about them is that it's something that catches your eye and it's something that, uh, that also allows you to add your own handwork into it. So there's uh, an abstraction in a sense. You see something that attracts you. It can be anything, anything from a leaf to a couple items like this and this, and I'll explain what those are in a second. And you know, I really think packaging is interesting to me because there's a lot of design work and utility that goes into it. And I have this archeological um, interest in all the pottery and the things left by the Egyptians and the things left by the Mayans and the you know, uh, pre-Columbian uh, Toltecs, Olmecs, all these ancient cultures and their everyday life because it kind of gives you a, a window in a time capsule into how we live. Anyway, having said that, um, this comes from uh, two Listerine bottles that we bought at Costco. And this is a fire extinguisher holder that came off my daughter's boat that was broken. But I just kind of like the design. So that's what we're going to use today to make this demonstration. So let me show you how that process works. I have um, the jelly print uh, pad that's a soft pad. And I've got the protective cover on the back. I have my carving tool, which you can buy, and they're relatively inexpensive at Blick and other stores, probably like Michael's and any art store. I have a soft brayer, and I have a little harder brayer uh, to help me spread this acrylic block ink onto the jelly pad, and I'll show you how we pick up these images. So, we'll so the reason I'm doing this is to get an image off of these items onto the pad and uh, then I can use that image to carve around and expand them. So I'll start off with just a little bit of this ink. And then we'll roll it out. Um, I'll actually want to try the harder um, brayer first. Yeah, I think this will work pretty good. And this will help me transfer the image onto the block print. So I've taken this this image here and I've put it on the jelly print. So now that I've done this image on the jelly print, I'm going to transfer it onto the block. And you know. I 
there you go. Now I've got this image here, and I'll put this over here on this side of the jelly print. Now I could just do something like this onto the pad, just to kind of give it, but see, it doesn't really leave you a lot of definition. This, you'll see, does much better, just to give you a contrast. And I may even pick up some other pieces from the previous print. There's nothing wrong with that. See? And then what I'll do is just let this dry a little bit. So not to waste this ink, I might as well make a nice print on a piece of paper to save for later. Here I can even use my clean brayer if I want now. That's how we take advantage of uh, every little bit of work that we do. See how beautiful that is. Great print. Now I'm going to show you how to carve. So I have a couple of options here. I can either carve where the lines are and leave that, which I think I'm going to do in this case, or I could carve out the negative space. This is a big open space, so I think I'll carve where the lines are. So I'll just simply follow along with this carving tool. And just go around and you don't have to worry about being perfect you just have to get into it and it doesn't really have to be perfect in fact I'm going to take advantage of this curve just to demonstrate that point because I like the way that curve is working as a counter to the image You need to just simply carve around. It's a lot of fun. I love doing this. And just keep at it. Now, generally what I do at this point is, this is my starting point, and I try to pick up little details like this other little partial on, on the end. Because what we want to do is we want to take away these square edges because then they give away the, that, you know, the print um, idea. And I'll show you how to do that right now. Uh, the best way to do it is you just can cut around into it like this and relieve the edge and make it somewhat organic. So you don't see the square edge. Oh, too much coffee this morning. Okay, something like that. Then I might take a look at this imagery and do some other things. So again, we're using these uh, blocks. They're called speedy cut. They have the consistency of those old school erasers, those white erasers. And uh, so they're a little bit soft, but they're also firm, and they're really easy to clean up. And uh, they're small enough to handle. They're relatively inexpensive, anywhere from 5 to $7 a piece for this size. And then you can get multiples and then have them around, and you can line them up and do sequences with them. So, uh, like I said, that's the brand and where you can buy them I've mentioned before. And uh, so I'll cut... That was a little bit of demo on that one. Let's get into this other one that we did. Now this one has some beautiful squared lines. So I'm going to kind of stick with that pattern and just go ahead and cut these straight out and work this uh, pattern. And I think I'm going to go like this. And again, you don't have to be perfect. It, in fact, my experience has been that the imperfections end up more interesting at times 
than the actual uh, tracings do. So you don't have to worry. I'm going to adjust my tool here. It's listening up. And you can play around with the edges any way you feel fit. And you can take artistic liberties here. One of the beauties of this tool is uh, it comes with a variety of tips that you can see here. And you can loosen it up and you can try, uh, you know, different, different squared off tips and this bigger U-tip. Now I use this bigger tip here to relieve the edges um, that I was talking about before, you know, and I might decide to take uh, bigger gouges out like this and relieve the edges. Because again, if, if you have square edges, um, when the print comes out, it, it just looks like you're using a block print and, you know, you, not that you're trying to hide that fact, but you definitely don't want it to be a constant feature um, because it can be distracting um, in your work. So you want the edges to have kind of a natural relief like I'm doing now. See how I'm just cutting the, the square edge and it doesn't have to be linear. You can move it with slight curves and you can have little pieces that you can decide to leave. But I've really found that you get a much better printing mechanism um, going when you relieve these edges and you get some real interesting shapes at times. Okay, so that's a wider tool. I'll change it to a squarer tool. Show you how that works. So that was a wider edge. Now I might change the tip and just like we always say in our painting classes it's really a good idea to uh, change the sizes of your brush Let's see I take this natural curve and work that all up the edge leaf this edge out some more Be careful with these tips because they are sharp. So if you get your fingers in the way, um, you might uh, ruin your manicure. <laughs> but you can see I've relieved all the edges now. Now I can go in and just finish up a little with this carve, taking advantage of, you know, whatever was left behind here. And I can change it if I want. You know, I don't have to follow what's there. I have enough now to, you know, complete whatever I feel fit at the time. So I can add my personal touch now to this found object. Well, hi again. Um, we're going to go ahead and ink up our jelly pad here. Now that we've done our carve out on these little blocks. I keep saying little blocks, they're actually speed, um, speed ball blocks. I'm going to ink up the jelly plate good here. Just get some good images here. Be a lot of fun. Oop. Here's the uh, print, but I'll go ahead and I'm going to use I really want to get some ink on this thing. So that's what I carved out. So let's see what we get when we put on a piece of paper. I'm going to show this one a little bit different on the edge. So you can see how the images line up together. This is kind of important. Oh, wow, that turned out great. See? Pretty simple, huh? It's a lot of fun. You can 
Here's the other one that I carved out. We'll go ahead and ink it up and we'll do the same thing. You see? Now I'm going to show you what I do a lot in my process is I line them up side by side. And the nice thing is I can use the back side um, of this that's square and it helps me keep a nice straight register on the print. Wow. See how much fun that is when you put these together? It's great. It comes out way different than these two items. But you get an idea now of the language that we're developing by putting these images in sequence. The next thing I want to do real quick is we'll do a jelly print. Print like we did on the last one, but these two images side by side so you can see how that works. And this I'm gonna I think we want to do it this way. These soft jelly uh, pads, what they do is they allow you to put pressure on the um, backside and get that ink embedded into the paper. And that's why you get this intense imagery. Look at this. Isn't that fun? Or you could set it up this way. And that's the process. Repeated over and over again and variating the sides you can put it this way on one and stand it on top like the other and do one row this way and then one row this way and offset them like brick patterns. So you can see Chuck's process of using the jelly plates is very different than mine. Um, and this is a sample of the type of thing Chuck is doing with the plaster and the print work. So you can get a pretty good idea of how he printed on the plaster. And this is something that will be demoed and performed. The students will do this this weekend in Chuck's three-day plaster class. And we still have a couple of spaces left in the class if you're interested. Just go to um, iniworkshops.com and you can enroll in the class there. Right, the dates are Friday, uh, November 4th, Saturday, November 5th, and Sunday, November 6th. All materials will be provided and will also provide food. So all you have to do is show up. Yep. We'll have a good time and do a lot of work together and have some fun. Definitely. Yeah, always so, fun. you know, Venetia is a fun town. That's where the studio is. There's plenty of restaurants things to see and you know you can easily get an Airbnb or um, a nice accommodation there so it's it's a good destination yes yeah so anyway thank you for joining us again and uh, remember go to your studio art is a practice practice makes perfect bye see you next week bye thank you